Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Welcome to Everything in Bloom on the 8th. A little different this time, mainly because I've got time on my hands and I'm bored. And it has come to pass that in this edition of this monthly sort of uh, thing that I do, there are quite a lot of quite small blooms. So I thought for a change I'd get the tripod out and getting close to some of these delicate little beauties. So um, we're starting off with this one. This is one of my recent gift sarcochylus. And this is Amber Yellow Glow, crossed with, I'm going to have fun with some of these names, Kulnura Kaleidoscope Full Arch. Obviously there will be pop-ups in case I mispronunciate something <laughs> like that. Um, anyway, a delicate little bloom. Um, I would imagine when it freshly opens it's more yellowy and it fades to a more creamy colour but I'll have to wait for a new spike for that and you'll have to excuse the aircraft today it's a training day so we've got lots of light aircraft circling round <laughs> with nervous pilots trying to desperately stay in the air <laughs> I've done all that uh, um, anyway that's number one there'll have to be breaks between these rather than a continuous film because I've got to move things around so that's the first one lovely little bloom I'm quite getting into these um, sarcochylus I don't plan on having dozens and dozens but nonetheless um, let me pick this up for a minute with tiny little plants like this um, you know there's plenty of room and these appear to be pretty easy growing um, so there's room for more of these. I only ever had the one. <coughs> that was a gift as well. And um, when it bloomed, I was impressed when I wasn't expecting to be. And um, now I've got two additional ones, so that gives me three. Um, anyway, let's get on to the next one. And this is the next one. Um, this spike's going over now. Um, I did notice when it came out of the box that the spike itself had a kink in it. Um, so I staked it to keep it straight, if you see what I mean, hoping that um, you know the blooms could still stay intact for some time, which they have done, so I'm sort of pleased with that. Um, this one's got another flipping name about a mile long. It's Kulnara. Um, everywhere that that word occurs in these names, that's actually either the name of the nursery where they come from or the place where the nursery is, one or the other, um, in Australia basically. And um, the work being done there on the hybrids is, is, is quite intense and there's some really good stuff coming out of uh, that place. <laughs> Whether they make it to the UK or the EU, we'll see, but some have. Yeah, so this one is Kulnara Fancy Red Edge Early, crossed with Kulnara Fire Mist on Arch. And um, this was more red when I got it. It's faded to a more purpley colour now. Um, but nonetheless, it, it's, it's, it's a good plant. Um, again, a nice, a nice tidy little plant. Um, Sorry, the camera's just getting his act together here, trying to focus. Well, it's gone from a couple of inches away to uh, a more distant one. And um, this one, effectively, has quite a few fans on it. Um, the largest one's the one in flower, and then next to that we have three other fans. Now, whether those are the seedling fans and won't bloom or not, I don't know enough about these to know one way or the other. Um, but we, we shall wait and see. But, uh, yeah, so that's the other sarcochylus in bloom. I'm trying to get mounts to stand up in a suitable place to get a tripod near them. is is proving to be a bit of a challenge, but we'll get there. Standing them in a pot seems to do the job. Now, this is my Dendrobium moniliform um, variegata. That relates to the leaves, not the blooms. And these are the last two buds now that have just opened. Um, we've had a bit of a sequence on this one, with blooms coming and going. And um, what we've got now are the last two buds that I can see. That doesn't mean there won't be more. Um, this blooms on and off. It's not one of those with just a seasonal bloom, so uh, blooming. Um, so it comes and goes. Um, that's going to show up as pure white at the moment. The delicate pink tinges that appear on this one seem to come with a little bit of age rather than when it first opens. So uh, pure white at the moment. Um, 
nice little bloom, delicate and enhanced in my opinion by the variegation on the leaves. Um, this plant itself is um, just coming back into growth now, um, so I've got lots of new growths coming out at the bottom here. Quite a few of them are not at the base of the plant, but they're very close to the base of the plant, so technically they're keikis. But um, nonetheless, the roots are going to get down onto the mount, um, so they will become part of the plant effectively. So that, that's that one. Uh, it's uh, looking quite nice at the moment, but um, it's going to be out of bloom for quite a while now, and those will be the last for uh, some time. I've been wanting to get in close on this one for some time and I can't do that handheld. So um, now that I've got the tripod out we can do it. This is Dendrobium Cuthbert sonii and um, now that I'm in that close you can also see the um, strange shape of the leaves. They're covered in gnarly little wart-like things. Now, you'll have to excuse the light coming and going but what we've got is quite a windy day with clouds going in front of the sun and then the sun coming out again and it's happening quite rapidly because of the wind so one minute is bright next minute is dull and then then it comes up again so the light changes are not me they're the clouds blotting out the sun every now and again but um, yeah worth getting in close on that one um, beautiful little bloom and that's been out since about January and it's still going um, I've got a few new growths on the plant just starting. That plant needs to come out of that tray. It was a good idea at the time, but it needs to go on a mount. Yeah? It, it needs to be able to be soaked and dry faster than it does like, it, like it's growing there. When I wet that moss in that tray, it's staying white, wet for some time and it's around the base of the plant, um, which could involve some rotting. So I need to get that on a mount. That will be done soon. Now this one was well worth getting in close on. Um, these are not tiny little blooms, um, about probably uh, 10 centimetres, 12 centimetres from tip to tip, but the lip itself is quite small, and that's where that patterning is. Um, Cylogeny nitida, or nitida, however you want to say it. Um, beautiful little blooms, fragrant, um, not what I would call the best of fragrances, but not awful, <laughs> somewhere in the middle there somewhere, but it's there nonetheless. It's not a strong fragrance fills the room type thing, you do have to get quite close, but um, we all like our fragrant orchids. And um, the plant on this is not doing brilliantly, the pseudobulbs are a bit shriveled, um, but nonetheless it's bloomed and following these blooms there will be new growths. Um, it's been repotted, so the new growth should be in new media and, um, you know, should grow on and um, hopefully don't get shriveled this time. I was having to go very careful watering it because the media was breaking down um, and it wasn't a good time to repot it because nothing was growing, <coughs> so I had to wait a bit. Um, but it's been done now, so any new growth should uh, stay nice and plump from now on. Pretty little bloom, fragrant too. Right, I'm off the tripod now for a bit. I get on to some of the bigger stuff. Um, the um, Iwanagara apple blossom is, is still going strong. These are not showing any signs of fading yet. And um, the fragrance on this is strong. As soon as the sun comes out, if it's there for more than a few minutes through this shade netting, then this one's off. And this one can fill the room. Um, the, whether it was fragrant or not, I'd probably have this anyway. It's just the subtleness of the shades of colouring that, that this one has. You know, fading from a pale yellow into tinges of pink, then purple veining on the lip with the deep yellow gold and red in the centre. It's just a beautiful bloom. So, um, anyway, still going strong, that one. I don't know how much longer. <laughs> and then the um, Dendrobium Wedding Bell. Um, not an S on the end. Um, some people looked it up for me and gave me some links, and it's um, registered as Wedding Bell, not Wedding Bells. And certainly not how I spelt it on the Facebook group. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, just change the E to an A and not get the spell checker to find it and you, you make quite a big mistake there. Um, delicate little blooms on this. They look incredibly fragile. They're almost like tissue paper and they are 
quite a fragile, fragile feel to them. But lovely colouring in the lip again. Beautiful purple on that yellow. And deep purple too. Um, quite a lot of buds still to come on this one. This one's just opening basically. Um, I can't remember how long they last but um, it's going reasonably well. <laughs> Tucked up the back here, fading fast, are the last few blooms of the um, nobly type, the prima donna. The wedding bell is actually a nobly type, believe it or not, but the prima donna's last couple of blooms just fading now, they're virtually gone. I need to trim those off basically and get some energy into the plant. Um, that was in bloom in February. Now obviously not the same blooms, but you know, a succession of blooming over a very long period. So even though that plant was um, decimated back last year, <laughs> repotted at the wrong time, split, hacked about, <laughs> old canes taken off. So um, the previous year's canes on this did not grow to full size. I'm hoping they will this year. I've got bulges coming out of the base of that plant in many places, so that'll be a combination of new growths and a, and a new root system to come on. Um, I've only got one um, Paphiopedalum left open now, and this one is fading. You notice the colours are starting to run together on the, um, the top bit. <laughs> never remember which are petals and which are sepals on these things um, but lovely large bloom um, beautiful coloring and I, don't, I hope the camera can show that the whole of the inside of that lip is covered in like warts hopefully the lights catching that down inside but um, yeah beautiful bloom desperately needs repotting but I'm just waiting for that another couple of days that bloom will be gone then I can get at it basically and then down at the bottom here, an overlooked orchid because the plant itself doesn't look that good, quite honestly, but the blooms do. And it always comes out in clusters. This is Dendrobium stardust firebird, aka the Kiki machine. Um, but the blooms are gorgeous and they do, it does bloom like a nobly. It is supposed to be a nobly type but there's quite a lot of other stuff in there besides nobly. Um, lovely veining, lovely orange and you know grows spikes out opposite the leaf as nobilies do and then blooms in clusters so all the blooms get muddled up together you never see them as, as separate entities on this one they come out in clusters but a gorgeous orange yeah really attractive bloom and they last this, this has been open some time but um, a fair few of the nobly types last a while, unlike some of my others. So that's that one. And then up here we've got the Dendrobium Frosty Dawn. That was bought at our um, 60th anniversary show. And although it was in bloom when I got it, I didn't notice this bud tucked away. So um, a little extension of the blooming for this one with a new bloom. That, that's just opened as well. And. Um, as this is my bloom, this time round I should be able to see how long they last. Um, very, very variable flowers on Frosty Dawn, all sorts of colorations, but fundamentally a creamy white color with orange, yellows, reds in or around or all over the lip. <laughs> That's my basic description of that one. Uh, and then up here, here we've got the um, Fundibulum cross. This is um, Dendrobium fundibulum cross with Lowy eye, um, so primary cross basically. And um, third bloom just opening, um, fourth one to come. So a cluster of four. Um, this was in bloom when I've got when I got it. Uh, this is its first blooming since I think. And um, four blooms in a cluster on this type is is quite good going. This is a black hair type effectively as is Frosty Dawn. Um, lovely coloration in the lip and a lovely shape. Um, there is a hint of Cattleya in the shape of this, despite being a Dendrobium. It's just the overall impression you get. Um, if you look around the back of the bud, it's obviously a Dendrobium. It's got that shape to it. Uh, they've all got that sort of spike affair out the back in some shape or form. Um, but gorgeous colouring, the deepest orange right down in the throat, and then this lovely gold yellow onto the lip, which sort of splashes out, and then the veining inside the lip. So a very attractive bloom, that one. Very pleased with a cluster of four as well. 
I hope they last a while. Now the big bush up here, the Dendrobium um, oh, Hancockii, is virtually over for this year. I see no more buds coming at all and this was the latest bloom to actually open. So we'll have this one for a while but not for a huge amount longer. Um, but they last quite well. I'm quite pleased and I had a lot of blooms this year um, so well impressed with that. Um, quite a sturdy looking bloom this one. Lovely yellow bordering on orange in the very centre um, and very fragrant but close up and it's a honey fragrance. A very sort of sweet distinct honey type of fragrance so uh, very very attractive and um, <laughs> Uh, a hell of a size plant to bag it up. Absolutely huge, that one. The blooms on my um, Dendrobium canico are still hanging in there, but they're getting very thin on the ground now. They are slowly but surely fading and falling off. Um, these are the last few remaining, and at the moment I don't see any more buds to come. But what I do have is uh, an absolute shed load of new growth. Um, last year's growths are these sort of canes, yeah, these large ones silhouetted against the roof and this year's growths are starting at the base of the plant. So looking at the way it blooms on the leafless canes, these last year's growths will be the next, one to be, next ones to become leafless and they'll be the ones that probably bloom next. Um, and there's one two, three, four, five of those, including some very large ones. So uh, next time that blooms, if they all come out together, it should be quite a show. Um, the canes eventually become heavy enough to become pendulous, but the new growths are bolt upright. They gradually arch over as they get heavier and age. Uh, that's that one. Still looking good. And banished to the back of the shelf up here because the blooms are only going to last another couple of days and while I was sorting things out I'm trying to get things where they're going to stay for some time but that's the nice little orange cattleya that's been out for absolutely ages and I'm not attempting to say the name I'll put a pop-up I'll just spend all my time typing it instead of saying it but uh, at least it'll be spelt right and said right um, yeah, so that's the last couple of blooms on that plant. I'll be looking for new growths on that now the blooms are gone. Um, it's not a bad plant, that one. It's grown quite well. So uh, hopefully we'll see some more blooms later, probably a year later or maybe nine or ten months. We'll see how it goes. And coming very close to the end now is um, the only Phalaenopsis type Dendrobium that's in bloom, which is Thai Angel. These have lasted very, very well. And out of the Phalaenopsis type blooms that I've seen in and around the orchid world, I really like these. They're unusual in their shape, their patterning, and I love the colour. So um, it's a, quite a tall plant, it's quite a biggie this one, but um, that's not a brilliant spike either with only four blooms. But um, hoping for improvements as time goes on but still looking good but I don't think that's going to be long for this world now the petals and sepals are starting to curl backwards more than they were which is a sort of sign that they're going to go soon on that one and this one's at it again this is the um, Griffithianum crossed with farmer eye and um, so primary cross again and um, incredibly short-lived Quite a little show when they come out, all the blooms virtually open together and that's the way they go over. Probably only in about 10 days time, I might be lucky and get 12 and then it'll be gone. And then perhaps we can get on and repot the flipping thing, desperately needs it. But um, I'm really waiting for some signs of growth rather than what the blooms are doing and at the moment there aren't any signs of growth. But there are some plants I'd rather not leave too long on the grounds, like I've said before, waiting for the right time or leaving the media that's breaking down is a choice you make. Waiting for the right time is good, but if in the meantime your root system's lost because you left it in the pot too long and the media's gone, it's not good. So you have to balance those two up and I think that one needs doing one way or the other. Now, I'm not quite sure what this is doing, but um, 
the colour I'm seeing on the camera screen is not the colour that this little um, no ID phalaenopsis actually is. So I'll have to wait till I get this into the video. But um, the actual background colour for this is a nice pale yellow colour. On my camera screen it looks almost white, but it isn't. <laughs> um, it's a very attractive bloom and as phalaenopsis go, not large, yeah, we're not looking at large blooms here, but what we are looking at is a good combination of colours and a lovely shaped lip. So uh, I like that one quite a lot. No ID, but I would suggest by the size and shape of that bloom, it's not a long way away from a species of some sort. Um, not a primary cross by any means, but not a million miles away, given its shape. But attractive nonetheless. Now this little phalaenopsis, recently opened, <laughs> is hanging on top of a pot, over to one side, with the camera almost directly above it. And it's the only way I can get the angle I want on the bloom. So I know it's sideways on, but I wanted to show the lip, which is one of the features of this little orchid. Um, it's an unusual shape, to say the least, and the coloration is absolutely gorgeous. Um, deep gold in the rear part of the lip, and then a pure white lip splattered with orange, uh, sorry, with um, purple dots. And then to back that up, you've got a good yellow background, absolutely covered in tiny little red dots that in some places almost form stripes. Um, it's a lovely attractive little bloom. I just opened this one, there's one more bud to come and um, then we need to get the plant to do something a bit sensible because it's not doing that at the moment but I talked about that in a recent video, I won't do it again. It's blooms time today. So uh, that's the dinosaur one. Obviously the pop-up's got the proper name. I thought I'd do a close-up of the Sideria japonica on the grounds that these blooms aren't very big. Um, for Phalaenopsis, they're, they're actually quite small. And this has been reclassified as Phalaenopsis. Now have a look at the previous two, back up the video if you need to, and then look at that bloom. And I'm sure you're doing exactly the same as me and asking why has that been reclassified as a Phalaenopsis. Yes, the plant looked like it, but those blooms don't. Well, not to me, anyway. Anyway, they're not going to last too much longer, so I thought we'd get a close-up of that one. And it doesn't matter how pretty it looks close up, I'm not keeping it. <laughs> it just doesn't do anything for me. Um, but others think it's wonderful. In my book, it's what I call slightly fragrant. If you get your nose in there almost to get the pollen stuck on the end of it, you might smell it, but I wouldn't call that a fragrant bloom as fragrance goes. It's a nice blo uh, nice fragrance, don't get me wrong, but that just doesn't do it for me, um, I'm afraid. But the fact that it does for others, somebody will get that down the line. But um, don't all rush at once. It'll be a draw. You'll have to put your names down and all that stuff. No favouritism. <laughs> right, that's that one. Right, we're back off the tripod again now for a bit. Um, I've got one reasonable bloom left on the um, Findlayanum and, and then they're going to be gone. Um, but again, you know, as, as what is effectively a resting type dendrobium, they haven't lasted bad. Nice colour combination again, but um, you can see they're fading fast here. <laughs> We're all mixed up together here, the dendrobiums. And, um, there is no getting away from the fact that Hercoglossum is just going to have a job to beat as my favourite. Doesn't matter how much other dendrobiums try, they'll have a job to beat that. It just is. And I've managed to get some reasonably bright light behind that cluster today. They, they sort of glow. Um, <laughs> as for number of blooms, well, you can count them if you want. <laughs> you can count them if you want, but I'm not going to. I would suggest a hundred, maybe more. And there's still buds coming. Still buds to come. Mass blooming. I think that might take a trip out on uh, Saturday to the Orchid Society. I've got to do my talk on Saturday. So that's what will be on my mind, but it would be good to let some other people see that plant. 
as it's doing a mass blooming at the moment. And then round the corner here, unfortunately these two are now on their way out. So uh, Dendrobium nesta, that's it for another year. And we have to get on with the growing and um, then do the resting and get it ready again to do that next year. And the Anosmum round behind it, that's, that's doing the same thing. They're starting to get that limp look about them so they won't be with us too much longer but both of these plants have had a stunning array of blooms gorgeous fragrance um, faultless <laughs> quite honestly uh, there isn't much else around that's got that sort of color I must admit so well pleased with that or those two and um, what else have we got over here um, my Phalaenopsis Sweet Memory has opened its first bloom um, these are attractive, these are fragrant, um, and this one's staying. Um, I like it enough to, to warrant its space. Big strappy flappy leaves sort of thing, but um, I'll put up with that for that bloom. It's attractive, I like it. And I've had the plant a long time, and um, yeah, it, it can just stay. And then lurking up behind, we have the Psychopsis. Um, I'll move round a bit so you can sort of get a sideways on view as well as the head on view. Um, again, these are quite large blooms um, in overall in the space they take up from tip to toe sort of thing. Um, and I'm pleased that I've even got a bloom on that because the spike blasted and died back but it managed to branch out sideways and it's pushed out a near perfect bloom at the right size so I think the spike is now safe um, the plant don't look too clever but I'm working on that <laughs> um, very unusual shape and a lovely set of colors on that one that one's going nowhere if I lost that plant which I still may do um, I will replace it at whatever cost but if I get another one I'd be prepared to pay the money and get a nice mature plant with several spikes on. So that way there should be one out in bloom all the time. Um, these spikes can continue blooming on and off for eight, ten years, it's been known. So they're just a succession of blooms one after the other. And if you had like four or five spikes, the chances are you'd have at least one in bloom all the time. So you'd have that gorgeous beauty around all the time. Quite something that. Now I'm going to cheat. <clears throat> so while I'm explaining what I'm cheating about, um, <laughs> I'll be doing something different. I've got two Restrepias in bloom, but I'd have to move about a dozen plants to get them out, and you can only film them sensibly um, with the tripod, and it's fiddly, and they're very difficult. So uh, as you can see, I've used pop-ups, but it is genuine. There, there are two Restrepias in, in bloom, buried in there somewhere. And tucked away down here is my Epidendrum. And the reason it's tucked away down here temporarily is I've got a feeling, which doesn't even sound right when I say it, this has been getting too much light. The leaves are not looking good. Once I get my magnesium and give it a dose of that, um, we'll see if the leaves get their colour back. But Purple tinges on leaves are normally accepted as being the lights getting near its limit. Um, this plant can tolerate a hell of a lot of light, but the other thing that you can get with purple tinges is a magnesium deficiency. So we'll work on that, but nonetheless the blooms are still looking nice, even though they're not right up on the top shelf anymore, and they're tucked away down here. They're still looking good. Right, I'm going to whiz along the Tolumnias relatively quickly without the tripod. Um, this one here is a new spike. That's looking nice. Um, I'm muddled up as to which one is which. Hang on, that's not, if that one's Tolumnia Peach, then this is the golden something or other. <laughs> as it says in the pop-up. <laughs> that's what the pop-ups are for. My memory's not that good all the time. Uh, this spike's coming off. Um, that leaves that one, which is the new one, with a couple of branches. And then this Tolumnia over here, which looks incredibly similar, but is in fact Tolumnia Peach. Um, 
and that is a branch so uh, again don't cut your spikes off <laughs> um, looking good those have recently opened but enough to get their coloration and what I'm really pleased about that is the one that's in the top of the shot at the moment it's got two spots on the lip area and they're surrounded by yellow I haven't seen it do that before most of the time the lip is just yellow with the um, peachy tinge around the edge but that one's got two spots on adds to the attraction now this little one is endearingly known as Mo 04 which I'm sure is nothing more than a trade name uh, this was one of the Christmas five as I call them that we got at the Christmas do from Lynn and this is a branch on the original spike actually it's, is it the original spike I'm not sure I can't remember but these have just opened um, these will not stay that color these will change quite dramatically so they're basically a lovely creamy color with deep red in the center and deep red spots but that's going to go pink very soon so just open those two and then this one over here has got blooms all over the place it's got a spike down here <laughs> which looks like it's branching yes it is so that's that's the oldest spike the low one and then it's got this one up here which was the uh, next one to open and that one's fading fast and it doesn't look like it's got a branch and then this was the latest one to open um, which may or may not extend and as the Tolumnias go yes I love the bright yellows and the oranges but you can have subtlety as well colors on that are absolutely gorgeous and it's not just the colors it's the shape the overall shape of that is almost perfect for a Tolumnia so uh, smashing one that one I'll put names up <laughs> and then the last Tolumnia is over here and this is a weird one because these are not typical Tolumnia blooms and they seem to come out almost at random in different sort of shapes quite cluttered lovely yellow on the deepest red as far as colors are concerned um, I suppose this one round here is a more typical shape but you can see on that single spike I've got different shaped blooms um, this is more like your normal shape but again a good combination of colors deep red some hints of pink and a, a lovely deep yellow in the center so uh, very nice one that one and that one I think now I'm not going to try and remember I'll do pop-ups <laughs> so that's that Right, it's back on the tripod again. This is Dendrobium fleckery, and um, these are not large blooms. Um, they are quite small, and to film this handheld, it, you wouldn't really see the detail in the lip. Um, I'm hoping I can turn the bloom slightly without it going out of focus. Depends what the camera does, but the detail in the lip is absolutely gorgeous on this little bloom absolutely gorgeous and then I'm going to turn the camera around and look at the bloom from the side look at the hairs coming out of that lip you don't see them head on they only show up from the side view I've only just noticed them now because I'm standing really close to the blooms and I've got one facing me and one sideways on I hadn't noticed those before so uh, yeah, lovely little Australian uh, bloomer, currently got three blooms out, it's the first time it's ever had more than one at the same time, and I'm well pleased, this, this plant seems to be coming on a lot better than it has done in the past, <coughs> so uh, that's that one, very attractive little bloom that one. Um, colour changer, uh, opens cream effectively, and then it gradually goes through a sort of shade of yellow until it gets to that sort of bronzy colour. Um, uh, it takes about five to seven days to change colour. So you do get the view of it as it opens for a few days. And then it, then it just changes colour. And then it stays like that till it drops. So, uh, yeah, very attractive bloom. And although this is a big enough bloom not to warrant a close-up, I thought the only way I can really show the veining on that um, very strange shape lipped, lip, especially here, was to actually do it as a close-up. Yeah? And that is 
a truly unusual shape. Um, when I first filmed this, when it first opened, a lot of said it's very zygopetalum like and I'll agree. Certainly the colours are. You know, you often get purple in the lip and green basic petals and sepals with deep coloured spotting on. So yes, it has a lot of, of, of a zygopetalum look about it. Um, but nonetheless, it, it's, it's a cross between Lalias and Cattleyas. Um, with a predominance of a, of a Cattleya species, which I've forgotten, but I'll put it in the pop-up. So, yeah, I don't know how long this is going to last. Looking at the plant being a bifoliate um, and a relatively compact plant, um, it's highly likely that this will only ever produce one bloom per new growth. Um, so to get lots of blooms out at the same time might prove a little difficult on this one. Now I could be wrong, um, but given the size of the growth and the size of the leaves, it doesn't look to me like it's ever going to have a lot of blooms on a spike coming out of growth that size. But we'll have to wait and see, won't we? I'm just pleased I've got one, especially when it's one like that. Okay, that's the end of the Everything in Bloom for the 8th and um, it's probably quite a long one this one but nonetheless I thought with some tripod shots and some nice close-ups I'm very aware that some people watch on large screens, smart TVs and stuff like that and um, certainly on small screens without some real close-ups you're never going to see the, the beauty and the detail of some of the blooms um, I'm <laughs> not encourage you all to all go out and buy huge screens, but um, I mean, I, I watch videos on my computer most of the time, which has a very large widescreen format, um, so I'm quite happy sitting there. My TV is bigger, but it's not a smart TV, so it would be a pain in the proverbial to actually uh, get that working in that way. I have to connect it to the internet and all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm happy with my big computer screen, but. Um, I don't, personally, I don't think I'd enjoy the videos so much if I only had a tiny little screen. Um, anyway, that's this one done. Until next month when we do it all again and we see what's new. And um, <laughs> next month it's more likely to be what's gone missing. But we'll see when we get there. I didn't expect there to be much in this month, I must admit. But we've done okay. We've done okay. See you next time.